Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Anteater and Serval Award Show. Ba, 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 ba. We are here at the end of 1981 and have watched all of the 1981 animated films that we could find. Mm -hmm. And we are going to talk about what we think was the best and the worst, mostly the best, because we like talking about the positives here on this particular episode. Yes, we do. 1981, our longest year yet. Yes, by a long shot. Long like, shot. This was absolutely the biggest year for animation that we have had ever. What was our total number of films we watched for this year? We watched 23 different films. That is essentially one, or like almost one movie for every two weeks of the year. Yeah. That's a lot of movies. That's a lot of movies. That's a and lot of movies. It's important to note we are still in what is considered the animation slump of the the like dark ages for, for America. America, which is why a lot of our films have come from not in America and yeah. have been for the last several years. Yeah, because there's not an animation slump elsewhere. Let me tell you. I. I definitely think that we're going to get more American films once we get to the second half of the 80s or the very end of the 80s into the 90s. For the sure. second half of the 80s and into the 90s, we're going to see a huge boom. And I'm frightened at how many movies we're going to be watching. And that's just America. I am sure other countries are also going to be like, we should make more movies too. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> Japan, Japan will never always, stop. You know, I think we had a conversation with our patrons about the recent, like, not using Japanese film in our reviews anymore. And they're like, well, you know, at least you're doing it now before Japan just completely takes over the animation scene. And we went back and we counted and it's like, no, Japan is already like 50% of the reviews that we've done. On from animation pilgrimage in general? Yeah. Probably, if not 50%, then a good 25% or more. Right. Like, it's like it's the Japan. First, Japan makes all the animation at this point. The first, what, decade and a half that we didn't have any Japanese films? They quickly started making up for that by, like, toy releasing at least two or three animated films per year. Mm -hmm. Other studios started producing more films. We already have started to get films that are specifically based on TV shows that are coming out. Like, Japan's just way ahead of the game on this. Yeah, they're going to be releasing animated films from now until the end of time, and it won't stop. Mm -hmm. But either way, how about we talk, like, remind people of the 23 films that we watched this year. Yes. That's a good reminder for me, too, because it's been a long time since we've seen some of these. It's been half a year since we watched some of these. Yeah. <laughs> so we started off with Mystery of the Third Planet. After that, we had American Pop. Then we had Doraemon, The Records of Nobita, Space Blazer. The Fantastic Adventures of Unico was next. Swan Lake. The Door into Summer. Chie, The Brat. The Fox and the Hound. The Sea Prince and the Fire Child. Enchanted Journey. Adu Galaxy Express 3-9. Heavy Metal. Yuki. Grendel, Grendel, Grendel. Son of the White Mare. Vuk. Maria Marabella. Peter Notale. Shun Rao. Monogatari Tao Tao. Baldios the Movie. Around the World with Dot. Old Master Q. And finally, Robot, or should I say, a Robot King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of movies, and I don't know if I honestly don't remember a lot of the details of some of those early movies, and I don't know if people watching remember those movies either. You know, there was a lot of mediocre films, but you know what I'll say? There wasn't a lot of terrible films. And in fact, 
We had so many good movies this year that a constant thing you and I talked about as we went through this year is how the hell are we going to pick a favorite? Yeah, what what's going to be the best out of this list? Because there's a lot of really good movies on this list, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed a lot of these, especially during the first half. Like, the, the yeah, year yeah. really started off really good. And there's even some films that, while they might not exactly be to my taste, they were doing some interesting things, and they're, they're pretty cool in that regard. Things like American Pop and Heavy Metal mm -hmm. and Baldios the Movie. Like, those were all interesting, and some of them were kind of disappointing because they could have been better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, before we get into the actual words, let's talk about some statistics for these movies. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. there were 23 of these films. <laughs> and dividing those down by country, obviously Japan gave us the most. But, Tanil, do you know how many films came from Japan? If I had to guess off the top of my head, I'm going to say they're just under half. You are correct. There are... 11 out of the 23. I was going to guess 10. Wow, yeah. Holy 11 crap. 11 Japanese films. Whew. Uh, do you know what country came in second? What country came in second? I know we at least had a couple from the USSR, but I think it's actually going to be America with three? You are correct. On both accounts. Yeah. Both the Soviet Union and the United States each gave us three. The, okay. the Soviet Union is a little more of like a... Co-op project. Technically, yes. Because they yeah. worked on not one, but two co-op projects. Okay. So, like, technically they did, but also kind of not. Because some of those movies, it's more difficult to tell how much was Soviet Union compared to the other country. Right. Yeah. And I'm guessing then that this means that the rest of the films are one film per country and or Belgium had their hand in a couple of co-op projects because that's been a running trend as well. Belgium did not help this year, at least according really? to our list. They might have helped a little bit here and there, but that's no. That's surprising. We, we still had two other countries that each gave us two films. Really? Can you figure out what other countries gave us two films each? Hmm. I'll let you know that both of the- Oh, oh, of course, of course. Vuk and Son of the White Mare. Yeah. Were both from Poland? Hungary. Hungary. That's right. Of course it's Hungary. Damn it's it. Pannonia Films. Right. Pannonia Films. Hungary. Damn it. Damn it. And I'll let you know the other country that gave us two films had a good film and a bad film, just like Hungary did. I want to say- like China and or Hong Kong. No. But like, I don't remember what the other... Mm -mm. No. Um, I, I can't remember. It's Australia. Australia gave us two films? Because I was thinking that earlier. Grendel, Grendel, Grendel. Grendel, 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 of course. Jeez. I mean, you probably it's didn't forget so about Dot. Long. Yeah, I didn't forget about Dot because we just watched it. But Grendel, Grendel, Grendel. Oh. Okay. And then we had four films that each gave us one. Or four countries that gave us one film each. Okay. So we had one from Hong Kong. Yep. We had... Uh, you're just going to have to go over okay. it. Okay. We it's also had... <laughs> we had Romania, who uh -huh. worked with Soviet Union to uh -huh. give us Maria Mirabella. Okay, yeah. We had South Korea with their Robot King. Yep. And we had Sweden with Peter Notale. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And so... Just, it's really funny the jump between Japan at 11 movies to at most three from any other country. Oh, yeah. It is just like huge. Just not even. It's not a competition. Japan makes the most animation right now. Uh, yeah. And at least films, film wise, but also probably TV as well. Well, and then take into consideration, too, the fact that it's not going to be terribly long from now until we start outsourcing all of our animation to either Japan or Korea. Mm-hmm. Like... Yeah, yeah. Like, very soon, you said, like, there's going to be a bunch of strikes here in America mm -hmm. from animators wanting more money to live, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, U.S. companies are going to start outsourcing all that stuff to other countries, mostly Eastern Asia. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like and, you said. And like we've talked about before, companies like Rankin Bass have already, already been doing that. Yeah, like Rankin Bass and Toei are are always doing stuff together. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the other uh, category of statistics I want to talk about mm-hmm. is the breakdown of what medium was used for all these animated films. Oh, geez. We, we had a bit of a diverse group this time. Although, hand-drawn animation's obviously still the leader. Maybe it's less diverse than I thought. Because there was definitely different styles. And yes. that's mostly what I think I'm thinking about. Yeah. But in terms of actual diversity of medium... There was none. There was no diversity of medium? No diversity. Everyone used traditional animation this time around. There was no stop motion. There was no paper craft. Obviously, we don't have any 3D yet. Mm -hmm. I will say a couple of movies did implement some live action into their movies with Maria Mirabella and Around the World with Dot. Mm -hmm. But the actual animation-wise, everything was traditional. It is the least diverse a year we have ever had. <laughs> You're like, wow, we had a really diverse year. And I'm like, actually, no. Actually, the opposite. The, but there it was, was a lot very of interesting diverse in art, art styles. styles. Yes. Yeah. There okay. was a lot of interesting art styles going on, but none of it was anything other than traditional. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's my statistics out of the way. So now we're going to start... Uh, the actual awards off with the best animated moments. What movies had some bits of animation that were just absolutely spectacular? And or sometimes we just nominate entire films for this. Yeah. I mean, do you want to start or? Uh, Yeah, I want to give special attention. Mm -hmm. This is not like a full on, eh, whatever. I want to bring attention to heavy metal and American pop. Because both of these movies have done, have gone leaps and strides in using rotoscoped animation. Yeah, totally. Specifically, uh, Heavy Metal's World War II plane and the Tarna segments Mm -hmm. used some very good use of uh, rotoscope and American Pop, the whole thing. Yeah, and it can still be clunky at times. It can Mm -hmm. still feel a little unnatural at times. But you're absolutely correct. Especially if we compare this to like the pseudo rotoscoping that was happening in like Ralph Bakshi's films, like this has made a a good step forward. Absolutely, I think they did a very good job of implementing it for this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, b- both of those movies. Yeah, uh, one of my nominations, and a movie that we will probably be talking about quite a bit as this list continues and these awards continues, is just the cuteness of Unico. And all of its characters and character designs. Indeed. The little animated moments that just, oh, they're so precious. Like, this movie was so cute. So cute. So adorable. And then they get to the very end of the movie and we have this giant demon monster. And that thing is also just animated with such presence. Right. It's, yeah, that whole movie was... Beautifully animated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was on my list as well. Yeah. And the only other movie that I actually nominated for this is Son of the White Mare. Because, like, we're going to talk about the art direction, but the actual animation that goes with it of things just kind of morphing from one thing to another, but keeping the idea of what it's supposed to be, but also emphasizing the dreamlike mythical sense of the story... This film's art direction is so on point that it not only has art direction, but animation direction. Yes. There is a specific way things move Mm -hmm. to tell the story. Yeah, and that is spectacular. Mm -hmm. That is A++. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of other nominations here for this category, and that is some of the Door into Summer cinematography. While Door into the Summer was an awkward movie to get through, it did have some really beautiful, like, character design and cinematography in general that I remember really liking. Okay. And, of course, I have to bring attention to Fox and the Hound. It has some of the last animations done by the Nine Old Men, Frank and Ollie. Mm-hmm. 
with the early Todd and Copper scenes. And then the whole bear scene at the end of the film is just like gut punch after gut punch and so visceral and violent. Like, I just love that scene so much. Of course you would bring up... So, like, of course you're going to bring up Fox and the Hound. I mean, you are you going to tell me I'm wrong? Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> I will not tell you that you're wrong. But I, honestly, I generally avoid the Disney films just because I know you want to talk about them so much. I know. Yeah. And I will. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for uh, Best Animated Moments. So now mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Best Art Direction. What well, movies look real pretty? Yeah. Even if the animation doesn't necessarily work as well... What movie just was eye candy to look at? I have two nominations for this category. One, to me, I think is the clear winner, but I think the other one deserves mention as well. Same. So my runner-up mm -hmm. is Grendel, Grendel, Grendel. That's exactly what I have as well. Yeah. I really enjoyed this very simple cartoonish art style that they went with. It emphasizes the the story that they're going for mm -hmm. it it's a very dark and serious story but like the very simple art style helps bring levity to it mm -hmm. which is what they wanted to go for with this movie and you can tell and it works there's just a very clear vision for mm -hmm. what this project was going to be and they ended up nailing it so well mm -hmm. yeah it, like it's just really great and then the winner is Son, Son of, of the, the White, White Mare. <laughs> because that movie is so goddamn pretty. Yeah. And I want to reiterate, um, in case anyone did not see our review, please know that Son of the White Mare has a lot of flashing and inverted colors that happen in that film. Constant. S constantly. So if you do want to watch it, be warned of that. But otherwise... If you have that level of photosensitivity, it may unfortunately be, be something you can't experience. watch. Yeah. yeah, but it is a really phenomenal film. Mm -hmm. So next up then in our adventure category, do we want to talk about the genres? Yeah, let's, let's talk pick? about the genres. So next we're going to divide all of the movies into specific genres, which are arbitrary and we chose, and you could argue that some of these belong in other categories, and that's also true and that's fine. But we just decided to do this to help split the movies into smaller categories to have a smaller base of comparing and contrasting. And we are not judging these movies based on if they are good at, say, the first category is adventure. We're not we're not judging them on if they are the best adventure film. We're just judging them on if they're the best films but it gives us a better idea. It gives of us a smaller pool to work with. That way we can highlight some other good films that aren't just like our top The best whatever. of the best, yeah. Yeah. So we have five categories because we had so many films this year. Mm -hmm. Our categories are adventure, comedy, drama, fantasy fairy tale, and science fiction. Yeah. So we're going to start, we're just going to go in alphabetical order <laughs> and we're going to start with adventure. And we had four movies for this category. Yep. Enchanted Journey, The Fantastic Adventures of Unico, Maria Mirabella, and Vuk. All right. Do we want to start with our favorite film from this category or our least favorite? Oh, we were doing least favorite too? I, I picked a least favorite for oh, each. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess my least favorite would be Vuk. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, most of these aren't very great, but no. I definitely think Vuk was my least enjoyable experience of watching a film out of these four. Yeah, I picked Mira Mirabella, but I could really, like... Vuk and Mira Mirabella are, are pretty even ground for me of, of worst. Mm -hmm. Best was, was obviously Unico. Easily the fantastic adventures of Unico. Absolutely, like that was. It, we've talked about it already, but the movie was cute, adorable, well animated. Story was fun. Mm -hmm. I just had a kick ass time watching this entire film. <laughs> kick ass time, yeah. Like this is one of my favorite new films we found that I'd never seen before. It's one going to be one of my favorite films for this year. Mm -hmm. Like this was just great. Absolutely. Moving on, we have comedy. This movie, er, there's only three in this category. We have Around the World with Dot, Old Master Q, and Peter No Tail. 
So, uh... Um, <sighs> uh-huh. Dot. Dot is, is the worst. worst. Uh, Old Master Q is the worst for me. I, the production quality behind this one was abysmal, and I could not get past it. Okay. Well, I still... Like, low production quality is bad, sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, if a movie is inherently just spreading misinformation and racism, I don't want to support that in any way possible, and that makes Around the World the Dot, with Dot, the worst for me. Yeah, no, I, I that's 100% understandable. So, yeah, Peter No-Tail kind of wins, wins by default. <laughs> wins by default. For I think the movie was fun. Not trash. It... It's got its fun moments. Mm -hmm. The character is fun. The the it cat animation when they are cats looks good. Could, yeah, it was actually pretty good. Like mm -hmm. could could fit into some of our like best animated moments category. Yeah, but most of the movie is spent as them as anthropomorphic. Animal. Standing on two legs, cats, and, and that that's part is really, less interesting. You're and really not uncanny well and kind of odd. Mm -hmm. But it, it was overall cute. Yeah. It had a good message. Definitely better than the other two. Yeah. Our next category is drama. This move, this the uh, six. There were six in this category. Mm -hmm. We had American Pop, Chie the Brat, The Door into Summer, The Fox and the Hound, Grendel, 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 and Shunmao Monogatari Tao Tao. Um, My least favorite for this one would be Shunmao Monogatari Tao Tao. Yeah, Tao Tao is definitely the worst of these. Uh-huh. It just, it's it a sad story. It meanders a lot, and then it gets really sad at the end. And, ooh. There was not a lot of enjoyability to ha be had about out of this one. Not that I don't like a sad story, because, like, Fox and the Hound is obviously going to be one of my one of my favorite films as well. However, my winner for this category is definitely Chie the Brat. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had two runners-up and then the winner. I, 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 I want to say I love Fox and the Hound. However, I think even during my review, I made it very clear that there are huge problems with Fox and the Hound. I have a lot of nostalgia for Fox and the Hound, but when compared to something like Chie the Brat, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give Fox and the Hound a reward for being mediocre when Chie is so good. <laughs> okay, fair. Uh, yeah, my two runners-up then were Grendel, 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 and Fox and the Hound because my winner was also Chie the Brat. Right. That movie was just another surprising, out-of-nowhere, wow, this is really g good. Mm -hmm. That was a slice-of-life kind of drama. In, like, it's got some weird stuff. It's got a whole plot line about a cat's balls. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. like... It was really enjoyable as mm -hmm. a movie overall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just really enjoyed this character having to live with a dysfunctional family and all that ha entails. Mm -hmm. And it was done very well. Yeah. Our next category is fantasy slash fairy tale. So, like, you know, mystical stuff. Right. We the had... Sea Prince and the Fire Child, mm -hmm. Son of the White Mare, Swan Lake, and Yuki. I hadn't chosen a, a least favorite from this category. It's kind of difficult, huh? Yeah. Mine was Swan Lake. Okay. It just felt the most inconsequential. Is the most boring out of all of them. Yeah, like, Sea Prince and the Fire Child was going for something. It was pretty, but I didn't really care for it overall. Swan Lake was very, like, standard all across the board. And Yuki had terrible music direction. <laughs> Yuki missed the forest through the trees. But I think Swan Lake was my least favorite. I don't know if I can choose. Mm -hmm. Out of those three, because the winner Again, is Son of the White Mare! Son of the White Mare obviously takes it, like, easy peasy, no competition. Mm -hmm. Again, beautiful, amazing art direction, animation, love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Good stuff. Which leaves our final category of science fiction. We have Adu Galaxy Express 3-9, Baldios the Movie, Doraemon, The Records of Nobita, Space Blazer, Heavy Metal, The Mystery of the Third Planet, and Robot King. This is a lot, a lot, a lot of very similar movies. Do you... 
I, I'm genuinely curious how much research you had to do of re-remembering which each of these movies which was, was which one. I had to rewatch a couple of APs to remind myself how I felt about these movies, particularly a Do Galaxy Express 3.9, because like I feel like I've just wiped that memory like of watching that one from my memory banks. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember we didn't like it too much. Yeah. After re-listening to the review, I decided it was my least favorite from this category. Mm, okay. And that's because like Doraemon was fine. Heavy Metal had some really great bits and some bits I didn't care for. Mystery of the Third Planet was overall generally pretty fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. And Robot King was bad, but in a way that's enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, I probably agree. Galaxy Express 3.9 was the worst. So that means that for me, Baldios the movie was my top pick for this category. I was a, I had a tie Yeah. between Baldios the movie because that was very well done and there was such potential there and they just missed it. It was frustrating mm -hmm. that they missed it. Yeah. And the other one was heavy metal because there are some low points, but there are some really high points. And hey, I like the movie that's kind of going for a Fantasia vibe. Who could have seen that coming? Right, exactly. No, nah, that, those are both good picks. Mm -hmm. But overall, the science fiction category this time, nothing really stood out for and me. And there were so many films in this category. Mm -hmm. Japan is on a <gasps> big, like, space high. And I don't think they're going to be ending anytime soon. Yeah. Space. All right. We're going to... Well, that's all of our individual categories. So mm -hmm. now we are going to talk about what is truly... The absolute worst of the worst. What movie would we never, ever, ever want to watch again, no matter what? Right. I only have one choice on this list. Uh-huh. Is it Dot? Yes, it's Dot. Uh-huh. Dot was terrible. Awful garbage butts toilets. Yeah, I have Dot and Old Master Q on here. And then, like... Also, Robot King and Adu Galaxy Express 3.9, because I just did not... I mean, Robot King had its enjoyability for being bad, but mm -hmm. it was also just a bad movie. I mean, yeah. But I think Old Master Q and Around the World with Dot are easily the worst. Yeah. I would not, under any circumstances, recommend this, like, those two films to anybody. <laughs> yeah, fair. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I could... I could easily recommend Robot King for a bad movie to watch, mm -hmm. but like... And a Galaxy Express 3.9, like, it's got to be somebody's thing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know see... it's some people's things because we have people that really enjoy it and right, they tell us. Right, exactly. And good for you. It, it just, just isn't our thing. It just did not jive with us. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's stop talking about bad things and let's talk about the absolute best movies of this year. I have three movies from third to second to first. I have four and I couldn't pick a favorite. Okay. I have a feeling that my three are probably on your list as well. Oh, okay. And I'm pretty sure I know what your fourth uh, uh, option is also on that list. Right. So starting with third place, I have Chie the Brat. Mm -hmm. It was just a really enjoyable slice of life movie. Never seen it before. It just wowed me with how simple the story was, but like how well it worked with the troubled family dynamic and stuff. Done by the same director who is later going to go on to make Grave of the Fireflies. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, it was fantastic. That was on your list, right? Yes. Okay, good. My second place option was Son of the White Mare. Mm -hmm. I movie is very pretty and the animation is absolutely well done but i think there is one movie that just eked out enjoyability because mm -hmm. like this movie is really good and i will watch it for the eye candy anytime but as far as a movie that you are going to go back and watch go back and watch and enjoy myself watching it mm -hmm. every time i watch it there's only one other option unico wins that Right. Far and above. Yeah. Like, that movie, even, it's just adorable, and the animation is so good. I just really enjoyed watching Unico. All three of my choices for this year, 
we had never seen before. And mm -hmm. that makes me so happy. Yeah. I love that. That's that's my personal favorite thing about doing this uh, show is finding new movies I've never seen before. That are really good. And being like, <laughs> wow, that was really good. Uh -huh. I'm glad I've finally had the chance to watch it. Yeah. And Tennille, what is your last choice? It's Fox and the Hound. Wow, who could have seen that coming? <laughs> oh, my feelings about Fox and the Hound are so complicated because it's such an important movie to me. It's a movie that comforted me when I needed to be sad. It's a movie that, like, felt like someone reading me a bedtime story. It's just a very, like, personal emotional support movie for me. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> it's also kind of a hot mess. It has these long comedic sequences with the bird characters that don't add anything to the plot and are just a giant waste of time. Um, it made the stupid decision to not kill off Chief. It, <laughs> it has very unpleasant racial segregation allegories that are very easy to take from the film. Mm -hmm. And like, that's not cool. But like I said, I grew up with this film and so it's still very like special to me. And of course, another huge factor in my continued admiration for this film is just the history at the Disney studio at the time behind this film. Mm -hmm. It's the transfer of, you know, the old guard to the new guard, and the new guard are gonna be, like, going through a really rough time before they're really gonna hit, like, their great stride. And I think that is so cool. So yeah, I would easily recommend any of these four films. Picking one of them is tough. However, I will absolutely concede that you should, if you have not seen any of these four films, please check out Unico, Chie the Brat, and Son of the White Mare before Fox and the Hound. Fox and the Hound just hasn't aged as well. Mm -hmm. Go check those out. Yeah. And I think that's it for our awards. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of really good movies, honestly. Yeah. Like, some really great stuff, some okay stuff, and I would probably say two to three real stinkers yeah yeah and hey that's okay also that was the biggest year ever and we're actually gonna have a couple of years that are a little smaller but before we start into 1982 i'm so excited for 1982 <laughs> we'll get there eventually uh -huh. i can't say soon because yeah. we actually have over the course of just this one year of 1981 we've had so many old movies sent to us y'all you guys are so oh yeah i guess just in general i want to say thank you to everybody that ever finds any movie for us and sends them our way so that we can watch these movies for this project and especially thank you to people that personally translate foreign movies for us because we have many of those now to go back and watch. And that is so cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, and like, we obviously thank everyone in each episode that they find the movie for us, but I just want to do a general blanket thank you to everyone that finds movies for us. Thank you to everyone that watches this for show with us. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you all enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we have nine movies to go back and watch. That, yeah. <laughs> that is that is so many. Nine. <laughs> I think before this we've had like maybe 3 or possibly 4 movies to go back and watch, but we have I think the most we've had before is 5. Okay. 9 movies is half a year. <laughs> or like it, it is like half of a regular animation pilgrimage year. Like that's half of this year essentially in right. one. And hell, 9 is more than some years have had full mm -hmm. stop so back when we were combining years mm -hmm. so before we finish wrapping up this episode i do want to say thank you to all of our supporters over on patreon mm -hmm. as well patreon.com slash flowers that supports both of us and that this project and this project and hell all the other things that we do as well but mm -hmm. like because your guys' support over there we can do this project and everything else 
So thank you to all of you supporters over there as well. And with that, all, all the plugs out of the way. Yeah. Join us back here next time as we go all the way back to 1947. And, wow. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to be watching The Crab with the Golden Claws. Oh my god. Which is a movie we tried to watch way back in the day. Yeah. But the translation was only for the first five minutes. But someone has gone through and finished translating this movie. So now we get to go back and watch a stop motion, black and white, Tintin movie. Oh boy. We've moved like five times since we've tried to watch that. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> All wow. right. See you guys then.